Hi, I'm Bill Kingsley with Team Kingsley. Today I want to show you how to take an off-the-shelf video effects video that you've purchased elsewhere and split it into two files to use with the Sprite Video Repeater. We use two files, uh, so we'll have one that loops constantly and it's going to appear as a still and then the second file is the effect that's triggered by uh, a step mat or motion sensor or however you set it up. Push button. This file is uh, from John Hires Video Effects in Minnesota and we're using PowerDirector software PowerDirector version 16 which is under a hundred dollars and seems to work really well. You can drag and drop your file from your folder into this area here in the edit screen. And once you have the file here that you're going to start working with, we can click on it and drag it down onto the timeline and bring it over here all the way to the left. So it's the very start. Now the timeline here will show time in minutes, seconds, and, and down to frames. So we're going to drag this over a couple of times until it won't go any farther. Now we're down to each one of these tick marks is one frame of video. So I'm going to select this very first frame here, to right click it, edit video image, and click on freeze frame. Now this has taken that frame and made it into a JPEG and put it back up here into our palette of things we can use. At this point I'm going to come down and click on the video area in the timeline so it's highlighted in blue and then hit the delete key. You know, keep doing that till everything's gone. So now there's no video down here. Now we'll take our JPEG that we created earlier and drag it back down and put it on the timeline. Now the default for this is five seconds long. For the sprite we generally would like, uh, generally tell people to make them 20 seconds or longer. The reason you don't want it too short is because it's constantly looping back and forth, back and forth and uses a lot of processor cycles and then the processor is so busy doing that it can't do much else. So I'm just going to leave this one at five seconds for now, but you can, you can drag this down again and, and add it in or otherwise extend this out. Once we have this the way we want it, and again, this is one frame that's just over and over and over. So if we would play it here, it's, it's not going to be any motion because it's the same frame, but it is actually a video. So now we're going to hit the produce button to go to a different part of the program software for the output. And we'll select H264 AVC. It seems to work very well with the sprite. And then there are some default items you can choose, pixel size, uh, like 1280, you know, this is 720p, 1080p. We'd like to do 1080p at 60 frames per second which works very well with the sprite, but it's not listed here. They've got 1080p at 30. So that's why we go back here and go to custom. And then in custom, you can edit and set it up however you'd like. So if we click on video tab, it will set this to 1920 by 1080 pixel size and frame rate we're going to set to 60. We're going to leave this at progressive. That's the P in 1080p by the way. And we don't need to change any of this stuff here. The coding. Let's change the bit rate. Uh, for example, a bit rate on a standard definition DVD is about 8,000 maximum. So since we're doing high definition we'd like to go at least double that and we'll, we'll go to 20,000 which works pretty well with the sprite. You can even go higher than that, but that should be very sufficient. So we got 20,000 kbps bitrate. There's also some settings for audio you can choose. Uh, you want to use stereo for the sprite. 
unless you're going through the HDMI cable into a home receiver that has a built-in surround sound decoder. Then you could change this to surround sound, but uh, for most people you're just going to use stereo. Don't worry too much about the bitrate for the audio, and then we'll just click OK. And then this is where it's going to save it. You could click here and select a different folder and change the name. But otherwise, uh, if you let it go there, it's just going to put it in your documents under the Power Director folder. So once that's set the way you'd like it, you click Start. The computer will do all the work, rendering the video. And then here's your final video. And again, if we play this, it's going to appear to be just a still, but it is, is a video. And we'll, we'll name this on the sprite, on the SD card, we'll name this file 000.mp4. And that's how the sprite knows that it should be the loop videos by the 000. And then we'll take the original video we started with, the full video with the effect, and we'll name it 001.mp4 on the sprite SD card. So this video you're seeing here will loop constantly until the trigger happens, which again could be a step mat or a push button or a motion sensor or some other kind of process controller that you may have that starts the trigger, and then the effect will play. And after the effect, it'll actually end on this same frame and go right back to this where it appears to be still. Now we have the loop video finished that's basically our still. Now let's go back and take the original video. We'll go to the edit screen and we'll highlight this in blue and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And let's take the original video we started with and bring it back down here. This is the one that's actually going to have the effect in it. And if we uh, go a little bit here, you'll see that the girl will change through the effects in and out. And just to make sure, because uh, again, depending on how you get these and, and where you get them, it may not be in the best format for the sprite. So we're just going to leave this alone uh, as far as editing the video itself. And we're going to go to the produce and just have it render it back out and make sure again we're at H.264. And we're going to make sure uh, we're at the custom profile. Let's check this edit pencil. Just make sure we're still in the same. Yep, we got 20,000, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second. So none of this has changed. So we just want to make sure we run this out at the same uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second at the high bit rate. So it's going to give a really good quality and no flicker on the sprite when it's repeating or triggering. So we'll do OK. And again, uh, you can change change the name of this, uh, or the location and name. You can double click it and pull up your folders or we can just change the name of here to, to something else. I'll just put a 1 there instead of a 0. and Then uh, just click the start button and the computer will do all the work. That's all there is to it. And we'll name this one 001.mp4 to put on the SD card of the sprite. To put the files onto the SD card We'll put the SD card in the computer. You may need to purchase a card reader separately that plugs into your USB port. And I'll open the SD. This is a blank one, nothing on here. So these are the two files that we produced earlier. Uh, the produce is our loop file, so we'll move it over. And then as soon as it's done copying, we are going to rename it. Right click, rename. 000 and I am in Windows 7 so uh, Mac Apple things will be a little different. Now we'll drag over the second file. This is our going to be our 001 that's actually the effect file. And we'll right click it, rename 001 and that's it. Notice they're they're not inside of a folder. They're just right on the the SD card and they're the only files on there. That's what we want for the sprite. Horror Girl by John Hires, used by permission. VirtualFXVideo.com Also, for more information about the sprite, video repeater, and accessories, please visit 
jimkingsley.com.